hey so thank you for subscribing and being here and i'm gonna have a conversation about young people who are doing something about the issues that affect all of us no matter where we might be in the world so one of my favorite titles other than mamanduko is my international title i'm a one young world counselor and you must be sitting there saying one one google it all right However, the three young people who've joined me today were at the One Young World Summit at The Hague, uh, which ran from the 16th, well, technically the 17th to the 20th of October. I landed on the 16th, I just realized. And I wanted to get four things out of them, and they're going to introduce themselves. What attracted them to One Young World? What stood out for them at One Young World? What they came back charged to do, and finally, why One Young World is important and why more organizations must support young people who want to go to this forum. Now, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourselves. You are recipient of the Caroline Mutoko Scholarship. Yeah. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Eric Omwanda Nehemaya, the co-founder and program manager at the Madare Foundation. And basically, Matai Foundation is a community-based organization that trains young people in photography, performing arts, and sports. We also offer sponsorship to children in the slums of Madare. How old is the uh, Madare We started Foundation? in 2013. We are six years now. You are? Yes. Yeah, okay, years. you'll notice a, a thread across the three of them in a moment. Madam. My name is Emma Ingaiza. I work for an organization called Shining Hope for Communities as a health manager. Also known as Shofko? Yes. Yes. Thank you. So we work in the urban informal settlements. We happen to provide health among other programs that my colleague will also talk about. We have established two major clinics in Madari and Kibera, and we have five satellites in Kibera alone. So I am glad to be here because I got to represent health and what, how we interact through health to bring change, especially in the urban informal settlements, which happens to be one of the underserved communities. This is true. And you are? Thank you. I am Okwama Eric, and I am a programs officer at Shining Hope for Communities. Uh, Shining Hope for Communities uh, uh, has a number of programs, and uh, we have gender program, we have WASH program, that is water and sanitation, we have got health program, education program, community advocacy. So I run a program called, uh, you know, Shofko Urban Network, which is a community advocacy program, which is basically trying to provide a platform for community members to call for action. Fantastic. Now, one of the things I think that is never well articulated about One Young World is that it's not a talk shop. It isn't a collection of young people talking about what if. As Eric said, the Madara Foundation is already six years old. You've been at Shofko for how long? For three years, oh. but it started way in 2004. I am well aware. How long have you been at Shofko? For five years. For five years. Yeah. So it's not a talk shop, but One Young World, um, and I will use the numbers from One Young World 2018 at The Hague, 2,000 young delegates from 190 countries. The flag ceremony is everything. You, we're sitting there thinking we're going to keep clapping until this goes on. But I guess what I want to ask, and I'm going to start with you, Emma. So. What drew your attention to One Young World? How did you even find out about One Young World? I found out about One Young World through a friend. She would work for us as a, as a chief program officer, and she advertised this position for scholarships. Mm -hmm. I also got to look at it on your page, mm -hmm. and I realized this is big. So she flaunted this uh, link to me to apply for the scholarship. Through which, which company? through Johnson and Johnson. Johnson, Johnson, and Johnson. Yeah, yeah. and uh, through that I got to visit the website and uh, through the website I got to learn that they actually are doing things that lead change, which was my main focus in the urban informal settlement, but through health. I was also interested because there were so many other people leading change and this interested me more to learn about to their world. Yeah. Okoma, how did you find out? Same colleague since both of you are at Shopko? Yeah, those slightly different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got to know about One Young World uh, first uh, through uh, my boss, that is the CEO, uh, Kennedy Odede, mm -hmm. who is the founder of Shining Off for Communities, and uh, a former colleague called Beth Knight, who works for Ernst and, uh, Ernst and Young okay. in the UK. Of course. Yeah, so uh, how this came to be is uh, after the two got to tell me about this. Uh, that is just when people had uh, had the Bogota mm -hmm. uh, One Young World Conference uh, in Colombia. 
and then they shared with me that is uh, both uh, Kennedy Odede and uh, Beth just to look through what was transpiring at the conference. I really got inspired, you know, okay. when I got to learn about what was taking place in the conference, we have, we have young leaders from various parts of the world come to talk about what they do. What they life. do. Exactly. They don't talk about what could be. They talk about what they do. Exactly. And I felt that I think this is the thing that I need to be. I need to have a global platform for exposure. Yeah. Eric, how did you find out about One Young World? Uh, in 2017, I applied uh, for the first time. And I had for my leadership award? Yes, uh, for the uh -huh. Kalamu Tuko Scholarship. And uh, it was in Bogota, Colombia. Mm. I went up to the finalists, but I did not manage it. Uh, so in 2018, the 2018, following through uh, uh, Carlos Mutuko yes. scholarship, I thought uh, I I can try it again. Mm -hmm. So I put my application again for the for the scholarship, mm -hmm. and um, it was I was actually in a matatu, uh, a bus rather, mm -hmm. uh, traveling from Madar slums to Pangani, just in the neighborhood, uh -huh. and I got an email from. From, from London. Uh, from London, to be specific. <laughs> yeah, saying. Uh, I was very excited. Uh, congratulations, Eric, you have won the <laughs> Carol Mtuko scholarship. Yeah. And uh, like, I, I don't, I don't pick the the winner. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I just, I, I well, yeah. I can't yeah. because two thousand applications as of this year. I think last year was about six hundred and something. So you you get to the Hague. We have our opening ceremony. You've got the agenda. What stood out for you? I'm going to start with Goma now. I had a and number I, of things. And this is about the, the, <laughs> name, the whole conference, not just our opening night. Exactly. Uh -huh. I had a number of things that just stood out for me during the entire conference. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that stood out for me is to get the presentation from the delegates, meeting young leaders from various parts of the world, talking about things that they do and the achievements that they have done, and you wonder how old these people are. Uh, thank you. And you realize these people are as old as you, and some of them are younger than are you. Younger are younger than and you. And that was pretty inspiring. Yes. Very, very, very motivating. Actually, that's what got me hooked to One Young World. Exactly. Because, you know, I, I remember my first One Young World summit was in South Africa. I was in Johannesburg, 2013. And I flew out of here probably two weeks after Westgate had happened. And to be in a room where I kept asking myself, Carolyn, what were you doing at 22? What were you doing? What were you doing? Not talking about. What were you doing? And I think that has always fascinated me. And I think uh, Bob Geldof uh, says it beautifully. He says, maybe one of the major reasons we counselors show up every year without fail is that we are hope junkies and you guys feed the hope more than anything else. What stood out for you? What stood out for me was the focus on young leaders. Yes. The focus on young leaders to be brought together so that through the stories of change that they tell, they get an insight that they're not alone yes. and that it's doable. While you're doing A in Kenya, mm -hmm. there's someone else doing B in Uganda, and this all is towards change. Mm -hmm. So it was very inspirational, and it also just energized me and encouraged me to go and meet my dreams. Eric, what was your big thing before we take a break? Okay, perfect. So much happened during the summit, and uh, for me it was a game changer mm -hmm. uh, because looking at the general organization of the summit itself, it's world class. It is. Hotel, and the way the people had the reception there, it was so nice. And also I learned a lot because the One Young World is a platform where they're addressing pressing issues that are facing the world uh, right now, mm -hmm. especially to do the sustainable development goals, which I have, uh, my heart is so close to them especially with quality education and seeing how uh, young people are going to be involved in the, uh, those kind of conversation. I think that, that came out of, uh, for me, is that uh, uh, through the, the summit, you could hear the, the public speaking aspect of it. People yes. are speaking. The uh, most articulate young people yes. anywhere in <laughs> yes. the world. Yeah. And when, wow. I, when I compare myself, uh, being also on BBC, I mm -hmm. was telling myself I need to up my game. I know. Yes, I so know. because whatever they're, they're doing is... Up to the it's, it's, it is. Yeah. And, and when you think about it, most One Young World delegates, and you know, I tried to call them delegates on WhatsApp, and they told me, we are ambassadors, <laughs> and you are, is that you're all massively under 27. But your, your oratory skills are at all Barack Obama and beyond. You articulate your issues really well. We're going to take a break. Um, while you're telling everybody else to come and look at this video and you're subscribing to my channel, I'd also suggest you take a look. Just Google One Young World. The rest Google will take care of, okay? 
Um, I'm a big believer in walking my talk. And the reason I send a delegate to One Young World every year is that I'm trying to beg corporate Kenya to join me, but I also believe that I can't ask someone to do what I am not doing myself. So don't worry, I'm gonna get to the ask in a moment, okay? Super, subscribe and come back.